Hi, I'm Professor Matthew Bate from the Astrophysics Group at the University of Exeter in the United Kingdom. In my first video, I told you about how you may be able to see the Great Conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn in late December 2020. In this video, I'm going to tell you a bit more about the timings and patterns of Great Conjunctions, and give you a brief history of some of the Great Conjunctions that have occurred over the past couple of thousand years. I'll start by giving the same brief introduction to this year's Great Conjunction that I gave in my first video. But then I'll give some more detail about the periods between Great Conjunctions and the patterns that occur between successive Great Conjunctions, using the Great Conjunctions of the 21st century as an example. I'll show you what is meant by a triple Great Conjunction, and then I'll get into the history. First, I'll briefly discuss the Great Conjunctions of the 20th century, then I'll talk about the Great Conjunction of 1623, and whether or not it was observed by Galileo or anyone else with a telescope at the time. I'll discuss the Great Conjunction of 1226, and then I'll finish with a few thoughts about Christmas and the Great Conjunction of 7 BC. A Great Conjunction refers to when the two largest planets in our solar system, Jupiter and Saturn, pass close to each other in the sky as viewed from Earth. Jupiter orbits the Sun approximately every 11.9 years, and Saturn every 29.5 years. Roughly every 20 years, they appear close to each other in the sky. On December 21st this year, they will pass within one-tenth of a degree of each other. That's just one-fifth the diameter of the Moon, which is close enough to see both planets together in a telescope eyepiece. Most great conjunctions aren't this close, Typically, they only get as close as a couple of lunar diameters. This conjunction will be the closest since 1623, almost 400 years ago. Coincidentally, the Great Conjunction of 2080 will be similarly close, but that's still 60 years from now, so for most people this really will be a once-in-a-lifetime experience. This animation shows how the planets have been orbiting the Sun since the beginning of 2018. The white dotted line shows a line of sight from Earth to Jupiter. Watch how the orientation of this line changes as the planets orbit the Sun. Most of the time, the line moves anti-clockwise, but for short periods it moves clockwise because of the Earth's more rapid orbit. During these periods, the outer planets in the solar system appear to move backwards in the sky. This apparent backward motion is called retrograde motion. Despite this, on average from our perspective, Jupiter has been approaching Saturn over the past few years. On December 21st, the line of sight connects Earth, Jupiter and Saturn. This is the Great Conjunction, when Jupiter and Saturn appear to be very close to each other in the sky as viewed from Earth. On average, Great Conjunctions occur about every 20 years. The interval between conjunctions is primarily determined by the synodic period of Jupiter and Saturn. That is, the period between them returning to the same orientation relative to each other. This can be calculated as the product of their two orbital periods divided by the difference between their two orbital periods, and is equal to 19.85 years. The exact intervals between great conjunctions vary slightly from this due to the Earth's motion and the fact that the planets have elliptical orbits that are also slightly inclined to one another. By coincidence, the synodic period of Jupiter and Saturn is very close to two-thirds of Saturn's orbital period of 29.46 years. This means that successive great conjunctions occur 243 degrees apart, or, since this is greater than 180 degrees, we can also measure this as 360 minus 243, which is 117 degrees apart. 120 degrees is one third of a full rotation, so every third conjunction occurs with Jupiter and Saturn approximately repeating their positions. This animation shows how the planets orbit the Sun during the 21st century. 
Technically, the 21st century began in 2001, but because there was a great conjunction in the year 2000, I start from the 1st of January 2000. There are six great conjunctions from 2000 to 2101. A grey line of sight is left behind to show the locations of Earth, Jupiter and Saturn at each great conjunction. You can clearly see that Jupiter and Saturn almost return to the same locations every third great conjunction, and Saturn's orbit gets divided into three sectors. Note that the great conjunctions of 2020 and 2080 are three conjunctions apart, so they occur in similar positions and are both very close great conjunctions, with Jupiter and Saturn appearing to be separated by just one-fifth the diameter of the Moon. We'll come back to this point in a minute. Some great conjunctions are like buses. They come in threes. Jupiter and Saturn appear to pass each other three times over a period of six or seven months. These are known as triple great conjunctions. They are much less frequent than standard great conjunctions, and they are irregularly spaced. Going back in time, the three most recent occurred in 1981, during World War II in 1940 and 1941, and back in 1821. There won't be any during this century. They occur when a great conjunction coincides with the retrograde motion of Jupiter and Saturn due to Earth's motion around the Sun. Here I show two animations of the Triple Great Conjunction of 1981, which some of you may have observed. On the left, I show a view looking down on the solar system. On the right, I show a simulation of what the paths of the planets looked like on the sky, ignoring whether it was day or night. On the left, see how the line of sight from Earth to Jupiter slowly caught up to Saturn during 1980, then passed Saturn on the 14th of January 1981, then reversed due to the retrograde motion and moved back past Saturn again with the closest approach on February 19th, and then finally reversed again in past Saturn on the 30th of July 1981. Here I summarise the great conjunctions of the 20th century. The last one, in the year 2000, was difficult to see because Saturn was only 17 degrees from the Sun. The 2000 conjunction also wasn't very close. The two planets only got as close to each other as two and a half times the diameter of the Moon. As we've just seen, the 1981 conjunction was the most recent triple conjunction, but again it wasn't particularly close. Each pass was at about twice the Moon's diameter. The 1961 Great Conjunction was three conjunctions before this year's so Jupiter and Saturn were in similar positions to this year's conjunction, and as you might expect, it was also reasonably close, at about half the Moon's diameter. There was a triple conjunction during World War II, from August 1940 to February 1941, but again, although there were three passes, they weren't very close. The 1921 Great Conjunction was too close to the Sun to be visible, with Saturn only 6 degrees from the Sun. Finally, the Great Conjunction of 1901, three conjunctions before 1961, and six conjunctions before 2020, had a closest approach of about one lunar diameter. So during the 20th century, the Great Conjunctions that were multiples of three away from the 2020 Great Conjunction were getting closer each time, until, during the 21st century, the two conjunctions with Jupiter and Saturn in this part of their orbit, 2020 and 2080, are both very close. The 2020 Great Conjunction is the closest Great Conjunction since 1623, almost 400 years ago. Galileo first observed Jupiter's moons through a telescope in January of 1610, and he lived to the year 1642. He also observed Saturn's rings, but he wasn't sure what they were and guessed that they might be two close moons of Saturn. The Dutch astronomer Christian Huygens 
finally realized their true nature in 1659, and he also discovered Saturn's largest moon, Titan. Since Galileo observed Jupiter 13 years before the Great Conjunction of 1623, the obvious question is, did he or anyone else observe the Great Conjunction of 1623 through a telescope? The answer seems to be no. At the 2020 Great Conjunction, Saturn is only 30 degrees from the Sun. That's why the Great Conjunction is only visible for about one and a half hours after sunset in the twilight and early evening before Jupiter and Saturn also set. The 1623 Great Conjunction was even closer to the Sun. Saturn was just 13 degrees from the Sun, so it would have set only about 50 minutes after sunset. And of course, it's very dangerous to point a telescope near the Sun. Don't try to observe Jupiter and Saturn until after the Sun has set. There are no records of Galileo or anyone else observing the 1623 Great Conjunction through a telescope and seeing Jupiter and Saturn at the same time. The exciting thing about this is that if you observe Jupiter and Saturn simultaneously through a telescope this year, you, along with many others in 2020, will probably be the first in human history to see this sight. The Great Conjunction of 1623 was 397 years before 2020. That's 20 synodic periods. In the same way that there'll be another close conjunction 60 years from now, in the year 2080, there was also a close Great Conjunction 60 years before 1623, that is, in 1563. But of course, the telescope hadn't been invented then. Jupiter and Saturn passed each other about 10% further apart than they will in 2020. However, the most spectacular great conjunction of the past thousand years occurred in 1226, again 397 years before 1623. During this conjunction, Jupiter and Saturn passed each other about three times closer than they will in 2020, only one fourteenth of the moon's diameter apart. Not only that, but in the month before the Great Conjunction, Mercury and Venus both passed close to Jupiter and Saturn. This simulation shows the Great Conjunction of 1226. The Sun was about 20 degrees away, so it would have been difficult to observe, but still observable. Mercury passed by Jupiter on the 5th of February and passed Saturn very close on the 8th of February. You can slowly see Jupiter and Saturn approaching each other during the remainder of February, and you can see the Galilean moons orbiting Jupiter and Titan orbiting Saturn. Then on the 25th of February, Venus, Jupiter and Saturn formed a triangle in the sky, only slightly larger than the Moon. This was followed a week later by the Great Conjunction itself on the 4th and 5th of March. It would have been a spectacular sight with a telescope, if the telescope had been invented. Finally, some people have suggested that the star that led the Magi, or wise men, to find the child Jesus Christ may have been the Great Conjunction of 7 BC. This conjunction was a triple Great Conjunction with three close passes within seven months. This would have given the Magi time to travel from their home country to Jerusalem and then on to Bethlehem. There are many other suggestions for what the star may have been, but since the 2020 Great Conjunction happens to occur just before Christmas, it's something you might like to ponder as you observe Jupiter and Saturn this year. In summary, Great Conjunctions occur roughly every 20 years, but each one is different. Some conjunctions are too close to the Sun to observe, and some come in threes. Jupiter and Saturn also appear to pass closer to each other in some conjunctions than in others. The closest great conjunctions occur 
roughly every 400 years, and come in pairs with two close conjunctions separated by 60 years. We are very fortunate that this happens in the 21st century. For most people, the 2020 Great Conjunction will be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to see Jupiter and Saturn so close together, although some may be lucky enough to experience it again in 60 years' time. Galileo, and others with telescopes in 1623, probably missed that year's Great Conjunction, which was the last time that Jupiter and Saturn appeared so close to each other. Therefore, if you observe the 2020 Great Conjunction through a telescope, you, along with many others this year, will probably be the first people in history to see Jupiter and Saturn so close together in a telescope eyepiece. If you don't have access to a telescope, please join astronomers from the University of Exeter as we try to live stream the view from a telescope one evening in mid-December. We don't know which day we'll be able to live stream on because we'll need a clear sky. So please sign up at our website with your email address so that we can notify you of the evening when we will try to live stream. You'll also find other videos at our website about the 2020 Great Conjunction and Jupiter and Saturn, including my first video about how to view the Great Conjunction yourself. I hope that somehow you managed to see the Great Conjunction of 2020 and also have a very happy Christmas and New Year.